Hi, my name is Sandy McTeer. I'm an artist with Dynasty Brush. Today I'm going to show a quick little seascape using some of my favorite Dynasty brushes, the black gold line. So what I'm going to use today is a three quarter black gold flat wash by Dynasty and also a half inch flat wash. Let's get started. Today I am using a water mixable, a water soluble oil. And one of the great things about the black gold brushes is they are so versatile. You can use them with oils, you can use them with acrylics, water color, mixed media, you name it, I pretty much use it for that project. So a little bit of medium on the brush. So the black gold line is well balanced. And what that means to me, put it a little bit more into layman's terms, is I really just love the way it feels in my hand. I love the way it moves. I love the way I can roll that between my fingers and get that paint off the brush. And again, that goes back to the versatility of it, that oils, acrylic, watercolor, a whole bunch of different products will come right off that bristle. It's well, well made. So I'm just going to put in the sky here. And see that beautiful bounce? It's got great control. It will move for me as I push down, as I lift up on that pressure. Um, and again, is my number one go-to brush in the Dynasty line, but I like them all. So, um, but for the W Oils, the black gold is perfect. So I'm just going to continue to work down that sky. I'll pick up a little bit more of the medium, pick up another blue and let's get into that water. But see how that just bounces right there on that palette? just gives you that great snap back that we look for when we're painting. So again, just put in that water right underneath that skyline. Great coverage, holds that paint well, but releases it to my surface perfectly. So again, we'll just work that back and forth and get that water in. I like to throw a little green in mine. So we'll just pick up a little bit of green and throw that into the water. That will come out a little bit later when we start putting some of those waves in. A Little bit of movement to the water there. So again, I'm just picking up more of the medium, more of the paint. And just what, I mean, it glides on beautifully. It comes right off that brush. Another thing I love about the I mean, just incredible filament that they use, the bristles, the product, the materials are top quality. And I love that I can easily clean it. It works when I need it to with the paint, but as soon as I'm done, easily washes up with soap and water and it's ready for the next project. So I'm gonna bring that water down, pick up another blue, let's see, maybe even a little purple. A little more blue. Again, just a quick little seascape, mainly just to show you how amazing this brush is with the water soluble oils. You can kind of swipe back and forth, get rid of that line. All right, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit more blue. Just kind of let that stutter down here. Again, I'm using a flat brush. It comes in filbert, flat, wave, you name it. There are a lot of different specialty brushes that you can use with this. So, and I would use them if I needed to use a specialty brush for say the um, palm fronds, which I'll show you a little bit later how to use the wave brush. But the flat just is amazing for getting all that paint onto my surface. And I'm not gonna wash out my brush. I'm just gonna wipe it off and then pick up a little bit of that burnt sienna, a little bit of that raw sienna, just bring that right to that water line. But using water with these paints works fine. The brush is gonna do exactly the same thing. It's going to load that perfectly and let that paint just flow right off. And we'll pick up a little bit of white, give our sand a little bit of light color down here. All right, so a little bit of white into that sand, a little bit more white here. So you can kind of see my sections. I have a sky, waterway, sand, okay? I'm just gonna wipe off that brush. And again, the great thing about the flat is you've got the corners, you've got the flat edges. I'm gonna concentrate on just using that corner right now, load it up with a little bit of white, and just lay in some clouds. So I'm just slightly circling the brush. 
It's not going to misshape or mess that brush up at all. Again, because that amazing filament in that ferrule, the quality that Dynasty uses to make those brushes is going to allow that paint to come right off. A little bit more white. Put in another little sky, a little cloud here in the sky. Wipe that off, just soften that a bit. All right, so again, a little bit more, and I'm just loading it on that corner. Put one coming right off the top here. Small little circular motions, and see how I have this brush toward the, um, almost parallel to the canvas. And just small little circular motions. Come right off those bristles, right onto my piece. So we don't want to make it a cloudy day at the beach. We want a nice sunny day at the beach. So I'm going to leave just those three little clouds I'm going to pick up a little bit of white, and as I come here, going flat across the canvas, just going to give us a little bit of movement to our water. Again, a nice sunny day, nothing too rocky in the water, just a little bit of movement with the flat of that brush. I lift it up on my pressure, but again, I'm getting that great spring back. It's just kind of bouncing up as soon as I put that stroke on. It's exactly what I need. A little bit more white. And then once it gets to the sand, we're going to add a little bit of that water coming onto the sand here. So again, I'll use the corner of the brush, be a little bit more methodical about what I'm doing. Again, that great versatility of this brush and all the different ways that you can use it. So I'm going to load a little bit of white on that corner. You could also use an angle brush. I'm going to use the flat brush, and I'm just going to lay in some of that water that's coming right onto that sand. A little bit more blue, a little bit more white. A little bit more on the corner of the brush. I'm just gonna lay that in in a little bit here and again soft what I love too about the quality of these bristles is that if I need to push hard if I want texture I could get that with the bristles but if I'm really trying to smooth something out again it's leaving no brush strokes it's just smoothing that out perfectly giving me the look that I want for that water just to come up right onto the beach Nice, smooth and tranquil there, just kind of lightly coming up onto the sand. Go the opposite direction just to soften it. All right, again, a little bit of white on that corner, and I have a little on the flat as well from when I put the water in. That's quite all right. Notice how I can kind of lift it up, put that corner down a little bit more than the flat of the brush, and then I'll come in and just soften that look. Again, a little bit more of that water coming right up onto that sand. Okay, and I want that to be a little bit more um, of a golden tone, a little bit more of a sand tone. So again, just with the flat of the brush, I'm going to load that up with a little bit more of the sand color. All right, so we've got our sky, waterway here, sand. I'm going to put a little bit more of movement. So nice sharp chisel edge is what you want in a brush and the black gold by Dynasty gives you that beautiful tapered tip that just makes a perfect line if you need a, a thin line a little bit more pressure is going to give me more of a wave look and again it just snaps right back up giving me exactly what I need in a brush again a little bit more movement in that water Out of the brush, you can soften that out. All right, so let's get a little bit more of this foamy water coming down here on the sand. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the half inch flat wash, pick up a little bit of medium, and I'm going to pop in a fun little palm tree here. So I'll pick a little bit of green up, maybe a little bit of Payne's Gray to make that nice and rich and dark. 
little bit of um, burnt sienna just to give it more of like a burnt umber color. So a little bit of that Payne's Gray and again that flat wash is just giving me that bounce, that snap back, exactly what I need. So both sides loaded up nicely, not to the ferrule, about halfway. And I'll pop in this little palm tree. Let's say it's going to go right about here. And I'm just going to tap on the fly of that brush, flip it over. Again, that's that thing about it moving nicely in your hand, as I love when I can just roll that in my fingers and it feels just right. So I'm just going to slide that up, get a nice little tapered tip there to our palm tree, come back with a little bit more paint, a little bit less pressure, but getting that great bounce for it to move right up to the tip. All right, so the angle brush is going to give you a beautiful um, line for those palm fronds to kind of follow. So I'm going to load up my brush again with a little bit of medium, and I'm using this a little bit different than, than maybe you're used to with an angle. Normally I would load the toe with one color, kind of float some paint on, but what I love about the angle brush is that as I'm trying to pull a thin line, it just is the perfect brush for me to do that. So a little bit of Payne's Gray, a little bit of Sap Green, and from the top, I'm just going to slide on the chisel edge. Think of it like ice skating. You're just moving that brush at the same rate, and that nice, sharp chisel edge is gonna give you exactly the line that you're looking for. So pull one right across the trunk there. Again, I could put a little bit, pressure, a little bit of pressure on that brush if I wanted it a little bit thicker where I can glide and slide right there on that chisel edge to give me a perfect line. So I'll rinse that brush out. And again, these brushes are so great. The uh, filament that is in it is top quality. Swishing your brush will work great. No need to rake it out and then soap and water clean up. So this number 10 has a serrated edge. So it's gonna make those palm fronds, the separation in those leaves, almost like five strokes in one. So I'm going to go ahead and swish that in the water, dry it off, pick up a little bit of medium, and then I'm going to load the brush, but I'm really going to concentrate on getting that to go right there on that serrated edge of that, um, the tip of that brush, that chisel edge. So I'll load that with a little bit of sap green, a little bit of Payne's Gray, and then you can slide along and pull. So watch that again. I'm going to slide right along that line that I gave myself for placement and I'm just going to pull. And look at all the separation that you get in that stroke. It's just amazing. I could sit there and do that with a flat brush or a liner. It's going to take me a little bit longer. The serrated edge is perfect for putting these on. So again, I'm going to slide along the top of that line that I created. Slide along. And again, almost five strokes in one to get those beautiful separated palm frond strokes. I'm using very little pressure. As I push down just a little bit on that chisel edge, it's giving me a great snap back, coming right back up to the chisel edge of that brush. And come back, load it up with more paint. Slide, very little pressure. And as I push out, I'm just letting it right along the tips of those bristles to get that serrated edge and let that uh, brush do its magic and what it's made for. So light pressure, just pull those little strokes, pick up a little bit more paint. We'll put one right across the front here. All right, so I'll wipe that brush off, a little bit more of the sap green, Pick up some cad yellow light, maybe some white, to give us another little variation of a green. And again, I'll come back fewer strokes and just add a little bit of a highlight. Doesn't matter if I go right on top of the strokes, again, because that serrated edge is gonna give me many lines. Maybe some of the palm fronds that you have, some are gonna remain darker and some are gonna remain lighter. It's gonna give you a great look. So again, just pulling on the chisel edge, a little bit of pressure to get that brush to paint those separated and serrated lines right into my palm fronds. It's almost like this brush was made to paint palm, palm trees. 
but it does so much more. It's just one thing that you can do with this brush. If I had an, a rocky sea day and had waves, I could use this brush as well to put in some foam, put in some wave action going on. But I think with the, um, the palm tree and the nice smooth sky, we're gonna have a calm day at the beach today. All right, one little palm frond right in the front. And again, light pressure, let that paint flow right off those amazing bristles to give you the look that you're going for with that palm tree. A little bit lighter. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to rinse that brush out. Again, just swishing that in the water. We'll wash it perfectly until I can wash it with soap and water. All the paint will come out of those bristles. I'll come back to my number 12 brush. Again, just make sure the water is out of that. It's a little damp. I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, burnt sienna here and a little bit of Payne's Gray just on that corner, just on that one corner, and then just lay a little bit of dark right into this palm tree. Again, look how nice that small little bounce you get as you tap that paint on. The snap of that brush is going to bring it right back up to the chisel edge, give you a nice control, balanced brush. So it gives you what you need in your painting. All right, so I think that's our quick beach lesson. Again, I'm using the black gold flat wash by Dynasty and the half inch, the three quarter, but also specialty brushes like the angle brush, the wave brush, but make sure you check out their line. There's a brush for just about everything you wanna paint.